The hollow roll of wind-whipped waters on secluded shores. Shattered rainbows lighting the sea-wet sands. The glance of sun on tidal waters running deep. Soft lap of running tide. These are the remembered voices. These the sunlit memories that lure Australians out of doors. Yet always beneath the familiar beauty, death stalks the careless and the unwary. In crashing surf or flowing creek, tragedy strikes swiftly. When it does, your knowledge of rescue breathing could save a life. Your breath, which spells life to you, could become the breath of life to another. One of the most important things you must learn about rescue breathing is speed. You must get air quickly into the victim's lungs. A person who's without air dies in three or four minutes, and the sooner you can breathe air into the patient's lungs, the greater the chances of recovery. Give the patient five or six quick breaths to begin with, even stopping to do so in shallow water, if it's going to take time to get up onto the beach. Don't forget, quickness counts. Notice how the rescuer holds the patient's wrist to drag him to shore. First of all, clear the mouth of any foreign matter so that air will reach the lungs. Then you apply mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, beginning with a few quick breaths before going on to the regular rate of 10 to 12 breaths per minute. In the meantime, someone should go for a doctor, while others should fetch blankets or coats to keep the patient warm. Notice how the head is held back. This is very important in helping the air to reach the lungs. In this model, we see the natural pathway for the air to reach the lungs is through the nose or mouth and down the windpipe. Often when a victim fails to breathe, this airway to the lungs is obstructed. This may be due to the tongues falling backwards into the throat or to some obstruction in the throat. Rescue breathing will not help unless this airway is cleared. But watch this. When the head is tilted back, the air pipe opens and the air you breathe into the patient goes right down to the lungs any foreign matter in the throat must be removed. Let's look at this again. Head forward and the air pipe tends to close. Tilt the head back and the air passage is opened. Now let's return to our patient. Notice how sand is packed under the shoulders to assist the head tilt. Remember to clear the mouth first. This is how to tilt the patient's head, one hand on the chin and the other on top of the head. Then tilt as far as you can until the skin over the throat is stretched tight. This position must be held all the time. Open the patient's mouth, but not too wide, or pull the lip down so you can breathe through his teeth. Open your own mouth wide and seal it over the patient's mouth, pressing your cheek against his nostrils to stop air coming out of his nose. Now breathe into the patient. The chest rises. It's just as good to breathe in through the nose, keeping the patient's mouth closed. If you can't get air in through the mouth, the nose must be used, and vice versa. The really important thing is to get air into the patient's lungs. Turn your head sideways while the patient is exhaling, so that you can hear and feel the air exhaled by the patient. Then you know that air is getting into his lungs. While you have your head turned sideways, take a breath. If the patient vomits, you turn the head to the side, wipe the vomit away, clear the mouth and carry on. Continue until the patient revives or medical help arrives. 
drowning is not the only occasion when it may be necessary to apply rescue breathing. A head injury, a heart attack or an electric shock can stop a person's breathing or weaken the breathing so much that assistance is needed. You must act quickly to save a life. With electric shock, turn the power off at the switch. Now this is most important because you will get electrocuted as well if you touch the body while the current is on. Now that the power is off, start rescue breathing immediately. Clear the mouth to make sure there's no obstruction. Place one hand on the chin, the other on top of the head and tilt it back as far as possible. After the first five or six quick breaths, breathe into the patient at the rate of 10 to 12 breaths a minute. After each breath, turn your head to take in air yourself and to hear and feel air exhaled by the patient. If the air is not exhaled sufficiently through the nose, peel open the lips with the thumb to allow air out through the mouth. Always remember, whichever method is used, either mouth to mouth or mouth to nose, the really important thing is to get air into the patient's lungs. Wherever children play, hidden dangers lurk too. Thin plastic bags that suffocate, small toys, coins and buttons, or any object that can lodge easily in the throat. All these things are threats to a child's safety. This little girl has a piece of balloon stuck in her throat and air cannot reach the lungs. Loosen the object by holding the child head downward and giving some sharp taps on the back. Then clear the mouth and throat with the fingers. Tilt the head back by placing one hand on the chin and the other on top of the head and start rescue breathing immediately with several quick breaths. With a young child, your mouth can be placed over both the nose and mouth of the patient, but do not breathe in as strongly as you do with older people. For hygienic and other reasons, face-to-face -face contact when practicing is not permitted. However, a formal drill is very useful where there are a number of children in a class. The procedure, including the important head tilt, can be practiced without the faces actually touching. Only those who know can save lives in an emergency. So always remember these four main points about rescue breathing. The first point, act quickly. Second point, clear the airway. Third point, tilt the head. And finally, keep breathing till the patient revives or a doctor arrives. Remember these well, for then your breath, which spells continued life for you, may at any time become the breath of life for a fellow man.